Nice to see you guys weathering the storm so good. I wish we could have been invited in at um, the Hills Hotel, but uh, that didn't work out. And I'm amazed at your your determinedness to stay out here with us. Thank you very much. So I want to make it pretty brief, but I should introduce myself. My name's Gary Hedrick, and I'm the co-founder with my wife of San Clemente Green. And we didn't start out as an anti-nuclear group. We wanted to create a more sustainable world. But whistleblowers came to us because they knew we would protect their identity. And we've established relationships with people over the last two years that have been heroic in putting their own well-being at risk so that the public would be aware of dangerous situations that otherwise we would just be blindly trusting the industry. And not to review the whole history of what that means in terms of factual information that they have provided for us, but as recently as last night, I was on a phone with a whistleblower and I asked him if I could patch him into another conversation with uh, Tom Zeller of the Huffington Post. And so we had a, an amazing conversation and it had to do with incredible things. When you think about what we're here today for, to hear the NRC talk about, should we start up this reactor at 70% without having fixed it? And the only way we know if something's wrong is if it leaks radiation into the environment. I mean, that alone is ridiculous. On top of that, we have a situation now at San Onofre where uh, in backup safety systems of diesel generators have been tampered with. I, it's really called sabotage. It's not tampering. Someone has intentionally gone in to make the diesel generators so they won't work if we needed them in an emergency. And that is so frightening that it's only the tip of the iceberg. Because if somebody did it once somewhere, what else is going on? How do we know for sure that something's not going to fail disastrously if they're allowed to start up Unit 2 again? So that part of the conversation was interesting because before it was theoretical. And what the whistleblower told us is that uh, Edison made announcements to the at the beginning of their work day saying that it's no longer a uh, question if that was an intentional tampering or not. They believe it was tampering and they're going to bring the FBI in to investigate it. But we, you and I, would not have known that if this whistleblower wasn't telling us. So we'd go into this meeting blindly trusting Edison and NRC and be totally vulnerable to whatever this maniac inside San Onofre that would do something so desperate. But it's not unusual. That's what we found out from Dave Lockbaum of the, Uni the Union of Concerned Science. He says there are other examples of workers being so frustrated and being mistreated that the uh, there are cases where people have actually thrown coins into the machinery or tampered with things with the intent of doing harm. So that's the situation we're facing today. It's gotten much more intensified and to add to the anxiety and stress of where we're at at this particular time in history, trying to prevent what our Buddhist friends have said, the sacred you know, responsibility we have to future generations, let alone ourselves, They're, they have plans. Edison has set the work schedule to restart Unit 2 on February 2nd. So this is serious business here. Whatever it is, they know that if they've been talking to the NRC or something, they are convinced that February 2nd is a real date where they're going to be ready to start if they can get approval. And I think when you put all these things together and you realize that we've gone through over a year, or at least close to a year, and through the hot summer without this nuclear power, what the heck are we thinking of? We can't allow them to restart, and that's why we're here. And um, I can't say it any stronger than that. We just have to stand firm, stand together, and make sure this doesn't happen. Too many people are counting on us. While we're setting up on that, I forgot a really important factor of my conversation last night with um, the employee. He's a nuclear operator at San Onofre. He was telling me about the problems with the union. And the union has totally flipped from being supportive of Edison, and they're so 
they're saying to Edison, we have letters of this, um, the union leader saying, we don't believe it's safe to restart Unit 2. I mean, these are the workforce. So I just want to make sure you got that message too. Yes. Hi, my name is Gary Hedrick, and um, I have a graph that I'd like everyone to be able to see. Can I step up there with just no, Gary, quickly? No, Gary, I think that you need to put those in the back. We're not going to do the signs well, now. Okay. This, this just shows all the tubes that have been closed. The two red ones are the, the tubes that have been closed at San Onofre. The little lines that you can't see at the bottom, those are all the other steam generators in the United States with very few tubes plugged. So when they say unit two is better than unit three, they're being honest with you. But it's not average, it's not normal, it's not what we want them to restart just because it's better than number three. I've also... <laughs> I've also, I got into this... Could you put those down? Because people are gonna get poked in the eye, just put it down. I got into this inadvertently, we, start a group to become a sustainable living type effort. We were approached by whistleblowers and just as recently as last night, I spoke to a whistleblower who also spoke to Huffington Post and there's a big problem right now. There's, uh, there's sabotage going on and the FBI has been called in to investigate how safety equipment has been compromised. So here we have this sabotage an environment where there's damaged uh, defective reactors they want to start up at 70 percent and see what happens and we're going to all this effort these guys are really qualified I know they're putting a lot of effort to make sure that their theories are right because we've seen not in theory but in reality what can happen in Japan and we're not willing to take that risk no matter how careful they are with their predictions and their theoretical hypotheses it's just not worth it when there's so much going on. Even the union leaders are saying they would not support a restart of Unit 2 because of the lack of uh, support from the workforce. There's so many things going on. I know I've used my three minutes, but I appreciate you listening, and there's lots more to be said. Thank you, Gary. Thank you.